We must do all that we can to close the gap between Israel and the Arab states and between Israelis and Palestinians. There can be no substitute for diplomacy. The time has come to put an end to Arab-Israeli conflict. The idea was the president, at the height of his prestige, sending the secretary of the state, at the height of his prestige, to the Middle East. And what we basically hoped was that no one would have the nerve to say no to the United States at that moment. Bush instructed Secretary of State James Baker to persuade the Arabs and Israelis to attend a new peace conference. Well, the whole idea that, that we came up with was to give the Arabs what they needed and give the Israelis what they needed. The bone of contention between Israel and Syria was still the Golan Heights, captured by Israel 20 years earlier. In Damascus, Baker suggested to President Assad that if he came to the conference, Israel might negotiate a withdrawal from the Golan Heights. We are not negotiating whether the Golan would come back or not, whether part of it would stay under the Israeli control or not. The whole of the Syrian Golan should come back to Syria. Having gotten nowhere with the Syrians, Baker then tried to tempt Yitzhak Shamir to the peace conference. I remember saying, it's going to be one big meeting that is going to lead then to bilateral negotiations. So that the Israeli government could say, well, this is really not an international conference. I wouldn't even consider it. It meant negotiating with PLO terrorists. Baker promised Shamir he would not invite the PLO to the conference. Baker then went to meet Palestinian leaders from the West Bank and Gaza. We in the PLO leadership opposed them meeting Baker. For us, this meeting was pointless. We thought it would not advance the Palestinian cause. Some comrades argued that the Americans wanted to create an alternative leadership to replace the PLO. For five nights, Abu Mazen urged the PLO leadership to let Palestinians from the occupied territories meet with Baker. Finally, Yasser Arafat decided he had nothing to lose. Exploratory. Exploratory meeting, nothing, nothing more. If things would proceed positively, then the leadership would take the credit. If things did not work out, then we as individuals would take the blame. When the Palestinians met Baker in Jerusalem, the PLO insisted that each Palestinian delegate be approved in writing by Arafat. I said to him, Mr. Secretary, this meeting could not have taken place without the authorization of President Arafat personally. And I took the letter out of my pocket, showed it to him. I reminded them that uh, the PLO, their, their organization and their chairman had uh, made a serious mistake in backing Saddam Hussein in the Gulf War. Well he sat like this. I pulled my chair around and faced him. We confronted each other just like two fighting cocks. He was so angry and uh, said, if you make you angry, what can you do? We don't have assets in bank to be frozen by you. We don't have airlines to be grounded by you. We don't have anything in the world that you can threaten us with. So court us, and we're willing to play positively, but as a major player. The Palestinians refused to repudiate the PLO, and Baker knew this would be unacceptable to Shamir. After 12 weeks of shuttle diplomacy, Baker was stuck. The only leverage 
uh, a Secretary of State has in, in this kind of situation is the ability to blame one party or the other for the collapse of the peace process. Baker came and uh, told President Assad, it is your position, it is very important. I mean, if you accept, if you feel that this is good for you, and you accept the American initiative, then the whole world will stand by Syria and will put the blame on Israel. Assad decided to go along. I'm pleased to report that Syria has agreed to the proposals that we have made, uh, including coming to a peace conference. Full of confidence, Baker returned to Israel. There was no way that an Israeli prime minister could appear to be less interested in peace than a Syrian president, especially when the Syrian president accepted coming to this conference on terms that were essentially defined by Israel. But Shamir put more obstacles in Baker's path. Every time the American team arrived in the Middle East, Israel announced the construction of a new Jewish settlement in the occupied territories, land the Arabs claimed was theirs. Each new Jewish home made Israeli withdrawal more difficult. Furious, Baker went public. It is easier to obstruct peace than it is to promote it. And that the, uh, that the establishment uh, of these settlements uh, certainly does not help the efforts of those of us who are interested in peace. The Palestinian reaction was predictable. I remember Faisal Husseini at almost every meeting he would pull out this map. I brought him maps of the West Bank and Gaza. The first map showed the situation before 1967. The second one showed the situation today, with the settlements all marked in orange. And uh, I finally said, uh, Faisal, let's, get, let's talk about what's important here. Let's talk about how we're going to uh, get a negotiation going because if we don't, we're going to keep meeting like this and pretty soon you're going to bring me a map that's totally orange. He actually told us you have no other alternative. He said, name any way in which you can stop settlements other than through the peace process. The local Palestinians were afraid to talk to the Israelis without permission from the PLO in Tunis. A meeting of the Palestine National Council was called. Our delegation asked Baker, could the refugees return? He said no. Will there be a Palestinian state? He said no. Will the PLO be on the delegation to speak for us? He said no. Chairman Arafat knows that these answers are accurate. They are no, no, and no. I told the conference, if we don't get on the peace train, it will pass through our station. We will never have another chance. I said, we don't want to be passive victims of history. We want to challenge, to intervene, to intrude, to participate and to present our own narrative, to speak for ourselves. And this is a forum. It was a forum Arafat himself had wanted to attend. Reluctantly, he agreed that the team from the occupied territories, not the PLO, would represent the Palestinians. But Shamir had another demand. He asked the Americans to guarantee a loan of $10 billion to help absorb the Soviet immigrants who were now pouring into Israel. I don't want to interfere in the American interior affair, but I would like uh, to inform everybody that not to forget that they are uh, using these uh, billions 
in building more illegal settlements on our land. This was our way to build up our country. What is the Zionist ideal? It is to gather the Jewish people into this small country. So we must set up more and more homes, large and small communities. What are the settlements? They are just communities. No Arabs lived on that land. It is not on their property. The Americans were unable to stop the Israelis from building settlements. To save the conference, President Bush delayed the loan. American Jewish leaders urged him to reconsider. I was approached by the leaders of some of the, the biggest uh, Jewish organizations. A Republican was head of APAC, which is a very strong American-Israel political action committee. And he told me that I was making a huge mistake politically. President Bush wouldn't give in. For the first time in history, the vision of Israelis sitting with their Arab neighbors to talk peace is a real prospect. Nothing should be done that might interfere with this prospect. And if necessary, I will use my veto power. We saw the president on television. He took a stand against the American Jews. I got really angry. This hurt me, just as it hurt many others. Bush had faced down Shamir. A few weeks later, Israelis, Arabs, Americans and Russians assembled in Madrid. For the first time, Palestinians were invited to participate. Today we have made a, a major step forward. There is a recognition of the Palestinian national identity. The Palestinians are speaking out for themselves for the first time in history. The delegates gathered at the royal palace. I will never forget the emotion I felt when, with Gorbachev next to me, we walked into this room in Madrid, and there, across the table, sat Arabs and Israelis. We come to Madrid on a mission of hope. To begin Everyone expected just, each Middle East delegation to be led by its foreign minister. To the conflict but Shamir had a better idea. I thought, Maybe I should go to Madrid myself. Shamir had devoted his life to fighting for Israel, doing whatever he thought necessary to establish, maintain, and defend the state. As he got up to speak, the conference waited to hear if he was now ready to make peace. I could go on and recite a litany of facts that demonstrate the extent to which Syria merits the dubious honor of being one of the most oppressive tyrannical regimes in the world. But this is not what we have come here for. He attacked Syria bitterly and accused Syria of being on the uh, list of uh, uh, terrorism. Uh, and I was very angry. I looked over and I saw Farouk Shara's face, who he just froze. And uh, he called one of his aides over. So immediately, his face changed and he smiled. He said, OK, go back. I will write my speech. I told him, Mr. Minister, it is 15 minutes left. Yesterday, we spent seven hours to prepare your speech. He said, don't worry, I will write headlines. Uh, so I <clears throat> lay aside my uh, prepared speech and uh, said openly, he is the last one to have the right to speak about terrorism because he himself was a wanted terrorist. 
أريكم I shall just show you سورة سورة if I may قديمة. a photograph an old photograph of Mr. Shamir why was this picture distributed? It was distributed because he was wanted. He helped in the assassination of Count Bernadotte, the, me the, me the UN mediator in Palestine, as, as I recall, in 1948. He kills peace mediators. I remember the faces of the Israeli delegation. They, uh, they were colorless. One Palestinian delegate then tried to demonstrate that no matter what Shamir thought, he was really negotiating with the PLO. So I said, the only thing that symbolizes Palestinians is the black and white kofia, which President Arafat wears all the time. So I decided to put it in my shoulder. And the angle of my seat came directly looking Shamir on the eye. It was engineered by God. It was just perfect. And I looked at him, and I said to him, and I nodded in my head, I said, he shook his head like this. I smiled. Really, he went this way. So I winked to him. And he said, just do this. And then after the session was over, everyone is surrounding me. So I said, why the sensitivities? We are the key to peace, to your peace process as Palestinians. And you must realize the new facts of life. Amid mutual recriminations, the conference broke into one-to-one -one talks between Israel and the Arab states. We and the Syrians moved to opposite sides of this big table. We sat frozen, like robots. The Americans and Russians got out as quickly as they could. They were glad to escape. It was difficult, half an hour. For me, for example, this will be the first time I sit face to face with the Israelis. The Syrians wanted us to commit to a withdrawal from the Golan Heights. We didn't want to get into all that. The withdrawal should not be a question uh, for negotiation. Uh, the, the withdrawal is either there would be a withdrawal, full withdrawal, or there would be no peace. The moment we would have said that we were ready to withdraw, this might have ended the whole thing, and the Syrians would have avoided the main question for us. That was the character of peace, the end of terrorism, the terrorist organizations with their headquarters in Damascus, and what about Hezbollah and Lebanon under Syrian occupation? All these topics were raised, and every time we tried to break this dogma of the Syrians. When they finished, the Israelis returned to their hotel, telling the waiting press that all their suggestions to try to build trust had been flatly rejected. There had been no handshakes, no smiles, little personal contact. I don't want to say that they were a complete failure, because the very fact that we were sitting and talking is in itself already an achievement. But uh, the substance was, as I said, futile. The Syrians, too, were unimpressed by their meeting. I would like uh, to express our regret for leaving uh, this city, Madrid, without having tangible results from the bilateral talks that our delegation held yesterday with the Israeli delegation. Israeli talks with the Palestinian and Jordanian delegation were so positive that they could be crowned with public handshakes afterwards. Both sides here, at least, confident of meeting again soon. America had finally brought the warring parties to the conference table. But it would take another breakthrough to convert fighters into peacemakers.